When someone one day writes the big definitive book of car history, well, the early years will belong to Germany for inventing the car, the 1910s, that's America falling in love with the Model T Ford, the 1970s, Japanese domination, but what about now, the 2020s? I think it belongs to the Koreans. This is a Hyundai. Hyundai started importing cars into the UK in 1982, and at first, they were pretty terrible comedy cars for cheapskates. Slowly, they graduated to making decent but dreary white goods for your grandparents. But in the past decade, something incredible has happened to Korean car makers. Kia started making good-looking cars like the Sportage, the Proceed and the Stinger. Hyundai's become a hot hatch hit maker with brilliant N versions of the i20, i30 and Veloster. And both brands are now home to some of the coolest looking family electric cars around in the shape of the Kia EV6 and Hyundai's Ioniq. Okay, so here's just one example of what I'm on about, right? This is the BMW iX, BMW's idea of a modern, handsome SUV. Sorry if you're eating. And uh, yeah, this is the Hyundai Tucson. This is Hyundai's idea of a modern, handsome SUV, which looks like a concept car, which escaped from the design studio and went on the school run. It's a bit cyberpunk, it's cool, and well, it's confident. And it feels like, well, after a long time coming, Korean design is now making the European old guard look a bit silly. So does that mean that Korean cars can now do whatever the hell they like? A proper sports car, retro looks, motorsport potential, a powertrain from the future? Well, how about all of those things in one car? The Hyundai N Vision 74. If you're seeing some Gijaro 1970s influences, you're quite right. This is inspired by a 1974 concept car, hence the name. Maybe you're seeing some DeLorean influences, the sharp creases, that shuttered rear window, the narrow snout. It's all in there, isn't it? But unlike most concept cars, what's under the skin is just as interesting here. You see, this is a hydrogen hybrid, part fuel cell, part electric. Let me explain. At the back, you'll find two electric motors. They generate a combined 670 brake horsepower, which is why this car is apparently a bit of a drift monster. They draw their power from a 62 kilowatt hour battery, like a normal electric car, and when it runs low, you can plug it into the wall and charge it up. So far, so 21st century. But the bit that's from the future is the onboard electricity power station. You see, Hyundai's also plumbed in a hydrogen fuel cell, which has been quietly working away on for the past few years, trying to make it as small and light as possible. The hydrogen fuel tanks weigh just 4.2 kilos and can be fully refueled in five minutes to give you another 370 miles of all electric range. Because the 74 is rear wheel drive only, as the sports car gods intended, Hyundai's had some fun with it. Because you've got individual motors for each rear wheel, it can do things like torque vectoring. So carve a tighter line if you're going for the best possible lap or just throw all of the power at the inside rear wheel and kick it out into a big smoky drift. They're saying it's got 664 pounds feet and could top out at 155 miles an hour. If Marty McFly had had one of these, Back to the Future would have been a much shorter film. So I'm afraid we've now arrived at that point of the video where I say, unfortunately, the N Vision 74 is incredibly fragile and furiously expensive. So wasn't it jolly nice of Hyundai to let us take a look at it? But um, like and subscribe and goodbye. Except because the Koreans are living their best car life right now, this is not just a model. It drives, it's really fast, and they say I can take it out on track. So um, I'm going to go and put a really ugly helmet on. Right, welcome to Bilsterberg. Probably the scariest racetrack you've never heard of. Built on an old British Army Cold War munitions base that some mad baron decided to turn into a race resort designed by Herman Tilke. Brought you a lot of boring F1 circuits, didn't he? But he really, really got his act together for this place. It's like all the scary bits of the Nürburgring knitted together and it only takes two minutes to get round rather than 10. 
So, a good place to drive a priceless concept car, which they've only got one of drivable in the world. I'm at an old army base and I'm in a hydrogen powered weapon. Okay, what can I tell you about it? Well, basically, it feels like a racing car. It feels stiff, it feels unyielding. I've been told to stay off the curves because this thing is fragile, but even though it's got power steering, lovely sense of connection coming back through this. We go flat check down the straight, that's 110 miles an hour. Feels fast, brakes are fantastic. There's no sense of any regen nonsense spoiling your confidence. In fact, this i30M that's being driven by a race driver in front of me is holding me up. Come on, man, get out of the way. From inside, a hydrogen car just feels like an electric car. There's no sense of weird science going on behind me. It just feels like I've got loads of torque, electric motors, there's a lot of hissing and fans happening in the background, but I'm not really aware of that. I'm just aware of having to catch the slides because this thing's got serious amounts of torque. And because of those rear electric motors, it can simulate a limited slip differential, but it can react so much faster. So it's like the best limited slip diff you could imagine. When manufacturers really get on top of these things, I think we're really, really gonna have some fun with them. Yeah, priceless concept car, so what? If you set it up to drift, I'm gonna try and drift it. Oh, there's so much elevation change down here. That bit's blind. Slight lock up there, but just turn it in on the nose. There you go. That's a confidence inspiring car for you. One and a half laps round an absolutely pad wetting circuit. Got a bit of tire temperature and you can just lob it around. Okay, so now going into the track mode, I'm gonna let the pace car get away from me on the straight here because I really wanna feel what this thing can do when it's let off its electronic leash. So let's just drop back. Hopefully the pace car is not noticed, I'm dawdling. And off we go. Wow, that is so fast. <laughs> Try not to outbreak myself into turn one. Oh, that was a bit late on the brakes. Got it back. Oh, it's so progressive on the throttle. The only problem is that with no engine noise, you can't really hear like when your revs are spiking. The first thing you know about overwhelming the rear tires is when you sort of start banging your head on the roll cage and looking out of the side window. Oh yes, this is a fun chassis. Oh yes, Hyundai, where has this come from? They've conquered hot hatches and now they're having to go at rear drive. I mean, no one is safe, are they? BMW M, AMG, even Porsche. I need to take some notice, guys, because this thing is going to come for you. And all too soon, it's over. Back into the pits at Bilsterberg. Me and the N Vision 74 have survived. I'm going to give it back to Hyundai now. I hope they don't put it in a museum. I hope they take this gorgeous body, stick it in a garage, work out how to put it into production and give it back to me in a few years with some number plates on it. Well done to the Hyundai technicians. This thing, if it's a glimpse of the future, is one that I'm here for. Well, I enjoyed that, but I'm afraid you're gonna to have to take my word for it because the 74 isn't the car that Hyundai is selling to the public anytime soon. It's a rolling laboratory, experimenting with what they can do with hydrogen, with the packaging, with the cooling, for if they need it in the future. But I hear you, you wanna know what the immediate future of Hyundai's go fast N division is? Well, that's to go electric. So let me show you this. Feast your eyes on the RN22E. Rubbish name, but an interesting car, because it's kind of a cross between the Ionic 6 streamlined saloon and an electric touring car. Now we know that the first hot N car from Hyundai's souped up division will be a new Ionic 5 with more power, but I think a 577 horsepower dual motor super saloon could be a fun place to go next. So um, let's take it for a drive. Okay, leaving the pit lane again in Bilsterberg. Already, this car makes a heck of a lot more noise than the uh, 74 did. This is a very different kind of car. This is Hyundai's answer to a Porsche Taycan, I guess. Dual motor, electric super saloon, 577 horsepower. They've asked me to leave the traction control on. 
because this is potentially even more valuable. So what have we got spec-wise? Well, we've got beefier brakes because of course heavy electric cars get brake fade on track. We've got this variable torque split so we can play with the power across the axles. That's already good fun to me. Obviously got lots and lots of aero too. Car feels very neutral, very responsive. It's much less tail happy than the 74 was. Of course, we've got drive going to the front wheels. Just feels like you can mash it. But Hyundai's adamant they're not doing EVs that are just fast in a straight line, that are about winning drag races to annoy people on YouTube who've got muscle cars. This is supposed to be just as good in the corners. And even though I'm not supposed to slide it around, the car wants to. It's hilarious, isn't it? Yet again, Korea has tried to build an elegant design study and they've accidentally built a bloody racing car. Woo. Now, more about this simulated shift. Yes, it's fake. Yes, it's just software. But I and I say, A, hey, it's fun to listen to something. And also, it's kind of helpful for my caveman brain. You see, normally when you're driving an EV, you've got no audio reference of what the powertrain's doing. But in this, because I can hear the revs, well, hear what the revs would sound like if it had a big petrol engine. And because I'm getting engine braking and then these little surges on the upshift, now I'm downshifting. Look, engine braking there and there. It's like grabbing third, then second gear. Just gives you something to kind of lean against. It's weird, it's so difficult to explain, but it does just feel, whoa, that was really lively through there. It just feels like you're driving a car with a responsive paddle shift gearbox. Okay, it's just the software, it's just the zeros and ones making that happen, but I'm already finding this very intuitive and very easy to use, which is kind of funny given it's a priceless semi-race car concept one-off. And there you go, I hit the rev limiter there. I'm making mistakes, EVs, EVs do everything for you and I find that boring. This car, well, I've already cocked up in it. You just saw me hit the rev limiter. I was a bit slow downshifting just there. It's letting me kind of make mistakes. I got some understeer there. This might be the most interactive EV I've driven. I'm actually, I might have to shut up now and concentrate. Oh, it feels lively. It feels like a kind of really glued down hot hatch, but with the new RS3's drift mode in it, but massively better throttle response. It's a really, really impressive bit of kit, this. I just hope that lessons from this do go into that Ionic 5N that we know is coming. This is gonna go on to become an electric touring car, and then maybe, maybe we will get an Ionic 6N. Maybe we'll start to get excited about electric performance cars after all. I didn't expect to be that impressed today, but as you can probably tell from my giddy laps, I enjoyed myself. But what really blows my mind is the sheer scope of everything that Hyundai is trying right now. A bit of retro flavor or a modern design, a bit of hydrogen fuel cell, awesome electric, and their petrol cars are bloody good fun as well. So while everyone else worries about how to do a driverless car, Hyundai is going to concentrate on making the fleshy human behind the wheel have some fun. So that chapter then on the Koreans taking over the car world should be a really enjoyable one, as long as stuff like this gets built.